violation of the law that was finally given to them. So, I think what was happening to Israel back in those days is happening in America today. That we are forgetting the foundation upon which our nation was founded. That we're forgetting that the morals and the principles by which we lived up until about 50 years ago, within my lifetime, uh, began to crumble and falter. But what happened to Israel? Well, Israel lost the remembrance of its past. It literally lost the remembrance of its past. It did not uh, take the advice of this and remember the days of old and consider the years of many generations. So here was a nation which didn't look back and say, you know, the God that we worship, that's the God that brought us out of Egypt. That's the God that ministered to us, provided for us, protected us, brought us across the Red Sea on dry ground. So uh, Israel forgot God's deliverance from Egypt. Deuteronomy 7, 18 says, Well, remember what the Lord thy God has done. Deuteronomy 24, 18, Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you from there. Now, so this book of Deuteronomy says on several occasions, Remember, remember, remember. We're remembering today that men and women gave their lives that we might have the freedom to worship according to the dictates of our conscience. Well, I'm going to give you a history lesson. I'm not a good history teacher, but in 1962, Engel versus Vitali pulled prayer out of the public schools. And I remember when that happened, I was in fifth grade. In fifth grade, we used to pray, and we used to open the Bible and read from the Psalms primarily. When we got to sixth grade, that all changed. There was no prayer, there was no Bible reading. In 1963, the Supreme Court declared that schools could no longer sponsor prayer or Bible reading, deeming it unconstitutional. So according to our Constitution, I have a copy right here. According to our Constitution, the Supreme Court says, it's not right that we in our public schools should have kids pray, but I guarantee you, when the Muslim kids want to pray, guess what happens? You got that right. Why? Because they're afraid. They're afraid of them. They're not afraid of us, because historically Christians are not fighters. We're lovers. In 1973, Roe v. Wade, does this one sound familiar to anybody? Legalized abortion, and since that time, over 62 million babies have been murdered. Let me ask you something. How do you think the financial situation of the country would be, including the Social Security system, if you had 62 million more people paying into the system? We're living with the consequences. Living with the consequences. In 1980, Stone versus Graham, Supreme Court ruled it's unconstitutional to post the Ten Commandments in public schools. 118 years before that, the Supreme Court said, and I quote the Supreme Court, back then in the 1800s, why not have the Bible, especially the New Testament, without note or comment, be read and taught as a divine revelation? Where could the purest principles or morality be learned so clearly and so perfectly as from the New Testament? Boy, did they do a 180 or what? So at one point, our nation said, and the Supreme Court said, hey, we ought to have people reading in schools, particularly the New Testament. Where else can they learn morality and the principles that we ought to live by? Well, in 1980, they overturned that and said, no. You better not post the Ten Commandments in school. After all, somebody might read those and obey them. Thou shall not kill. And what's happening in our schools today? We got people coming in schools killing kids. We're paying the consequence. 2003, Lawrence versus Texas. They overturned the anti-sodomy laws considering a violation of Privacy Act. And the precedent was set by Roe v. Wade. 
Roe v. Wade. They won that case because they said it's a matter of privacy. A woman has a right to do what she wants with her own body. Funny, how come the government has the right to tell you to put a seatbelt on? Isn't it in your own body? They have a right to tell you not to ingest certain drugs. I mean, marijuana is okay. If you can't do heroin, hmm, strange. I always find it strange how the extreme left always talks out of both sides of their mouths. 1915, 19, 2015, Supreme Court struck down all state bans on same-sex marriage and legalized it in all 50 states. Over, over, over gel versus Hodge, according to the Fourth, uh, the Fourth Amendment, and I'm going to read the Fourth Amendment here to you, in case you're wondering, what exactly is the Fourteenth uh, Amendment, I'm sorry, Fourteenth Amendment say that would cause them to vote that way? Well, here's the Fourteenth Amendment. All persons born and naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or the immunity of citizens in the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process law, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction equal protection of the laws. So according to that, they said, okay, no state can tell somebody that they can't pursue life, liberty, doesn't say the pursuit of happiness, uh, but property, and of course, without uh, uh, or deny any person within this jurisdiction, equal protection of the laws. And so according to that, they said, that's it, okay. So same-sex marriage, all 50 states. That's what happened. So here we see this, this slide. Oh, and in 2020, let me finish the slide here. Federal Appeals Court ruled on behalf of a, a female um, who now goes by the name of Nick, now identifies as male, this is in South Dakota, to have the right to be in the boys' swim team and in the boys' locker room. Now, because they voted for Nick, this sets a precedent for all future cases that are brought to the court. And so now school systems are worried about being sued. So they're gonna let boys go in the girls' locker room. And, and I'll be honest with you, because I used to be a teenager, um, not long ago, I think it was like five or six years ago, I was a teenager. <laughs> and, um, and I happen to know that there are boys that have enough guts to walk into school one day and say, you know, I'm a girl today. I'm a girl, and I, I'm going in the girls' locker room. You can't stop me from going to the girls' but stay, I'm a girl. You'd say, no, no teenage boy would do that. Thing, thing. No, they wouldn't do that unless they really thought they were a girl. Think, think. Once you open the door, Bad things begin to happen. So Israel, they lost, or they did not remember, if you will, what God had done for them. They did not remember the foundation upon which they were uh, based as a, or formed as a nation. And second of all, Israel lost all remembrance of reality. No reality. You say, what do you mean? Well, they thought they were invincible. They thought they were invincible. I mentioned that a couple minutes ago. They thought nothing can happen to us because God is our God. We can worship other gods. We can commit all kinds of immorality and God will never judge us because we're God's special people. I met a Jewish woman once at a book sale and because of the Holocaust, she stopped believing in God. See, her problem was the Jewish people are God's chosen people. And therefore, because God allowed that to happen in the Holocaust, there can't be a God. God would not allow that to happen to the Jewish people. How wrong you are, lady. How wrong you are. Who do you think you are to be a Christ rejecter, to mock the Christians and say, you Christians are wrong, Jesus isn't the Messiah, 
He's just a man who died on a cross and he never rose again from the dead. I'm telling you, Jesus is the Messiah. He died for the sins of the world. He was buried and three days later he rose again from the dead. Amen. And 40 days later he ascended into heaven and we're waiting for him to come back. Amen. Amen. So that's all I have to say to get an amen out of this church. <laughs> So he died for the sins. <laughs> I think America's I we 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 have forgotten reality. Let me name you a couple of things. Let's follow the science. There are two genders. Amen. Amen. Two genders. Now my wife always, I don't know, maybe she's gonna be serious, but she said, when I renew my license and ask for what sex you are, she said, I'm going to be, I'm going to tell them I'm the zebra. <laughs> I'm the zebra. Okie dokie then. There are two genders. And when they, and now of course, because the argument is your biology determines your sex, of course what they're teaching now is no it doesn't. And people are believing that. They're saying no, your sex is determined up here in your head. Number one, there's no man no man that thinks he's a woman can think like a woman. I'm not saying that lightly. I'm just saying that's a reality. It's a man who thinks he's a woman, but he's not thinking like a woman. Women think differently than men. Scientifically, men generally think out of one side of the brain, I know this is going to sound funny, and women out of both sides. So really, they're twice as smart as men. <laughs> so the thought process is actually different in the brain, according to brain scans. So just because you think you're something doesn't make you that thing. In fact, up until the very present hour, if you will, within the past year or two at the most, it was a malady. It was called gender dysphoria. You would go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist and you would bring somebody, my kid thinks he's a girl. By the way, if a boy who's four years old plays with dolls, it doesn't make him a girl. It makes him a boy that just happens to be playing with dolls that day. And when a girl climbs a tree, it doesn't make her a boy. Now in my day, it made her a tomboy. But she was still a girl. Today, first of all, no kid that's under the age of 10, I mean, it depends on the individual, really thinks about sex. Amen. It's all the parent, it's the adults that are looking at a four-year-old kid playing with a doll and saying, would you like to try to dress? Do you think it's the adult that is bending the mind of that child? There's two. I have another one. This is biblical and it's cultural. In all of human history, all of human history, one man married one woman. Amen. In all of human history. Now in some cultures, one man would marry several women. What an idiot those men were. <laughs> <laughs> what fools they were. By the way, here's something. You can't spend more than you make and get away with it. Hello, Congress. You can't spend more than you make and get away with it. You say, we just raise taxes. No, you'll finally raise taxes to the point where people will rebel. How about this? Education is for edification, not for social reconditioning. That's what's happening in schools today. Exactly. A public school system to teach a kid math, reading, and writing, and true history. Let me... Uh, California proves corrupt curriculum. This is a headline in uh, the paper. California's Board of Education voted unanimously to approve a new multi-million dollar ethics studies model curriculum, which will be offered statewide. You say, what's in the curriculum? Students will be taught that white Christian settlers committed theocide against indigenous tribes when they arrived in the new world by murdering Native American gods and replacing them with a Christian god. 
According to the curriculum, this replacement ushered in a regime uh, defined by commonality and genocide. I put that in quote. So white Christian settlers committed genocide because we were teaching them about the true and the living God. So, what else? Well, let's see here. California seeks to find retail stores for having separate girls and boys sections. So, the bill will specify that a retail department store that offers child care items for sale is required to maintain one item undivided area of its sales floor where the majority of the child care items being offered shall be displayed regardless of whether a particular child care item has been, I'm sorry, it's not clothing, child care items, has been traditionally marketed for either girls or boys. In other words, let's not, let's not offend those people that aren't sure. So we can't have anything that says, this is for girls, this is for boys. So we're gonna mash it all together. You say, can it get any worse? <laughs> you have no idea. Um, How about this one? LBGT lawsuit seeks to block Title IX religious exemptions for Christian colleges. Oh. Christian universities are fighting a lawsuit filed by the LBGTQ RSDUP crowd legal group which seeks to strip federal financial aid from college students for attending faith-based universities. Now, I know that Kara gets a, um, something from FAFSA or, or some government uh, aid, and so all government aid will be cut off um, because, after all, apparently we're teaching the wrong things in these universities. The lawsuits wants to remove the Title IX religious exemption to restrict students at faith-based institutions that adhere to traditional sexuality and gender beliefs from receiving traditional uh, tuition grants and student loans in any form from the federal financial uh, finance. So the battle is marching on. You say, why? Why, why is this all going on? Because America has forgotten reality. What is real and what is not real? What is normal and what is not normal? Over four in 10 American Christians say, are you ready to this? Four in 10, 40% of Christians say the Bible is ambiguous on abortion. I'm telling you it is not ambiguous on abortion. In fact, it was Jeremiah who said that you knew me, Lord, when I was in my mother's womb. David in the psalm said, you formed me and fashioned me when I was in the womb. A human life is in the womb. You say, well, it's a woman's right to do what she wants with her own body. Yeah, your own body, but the problem is you got another body in your body by the grace of God and the miracle of God. And if you don't want the child, just have the child and put it up for adoption. Anyway, well, we won't get into that. That wasn't my message, actually. All I'm saying is this. I think we're on a, di a downward spiral. I think we need to get back to where we need to be. And no matter what happens out there, we need to go out of these doors, and we need to live our lives as Christians Amen. unapologetically. We need to say that we are Christians, we believe the Bible is true, we believe there's a God in heaven, and we believe that he will bless America, not because the president says, God bless America, at the end of a statement or, or a, a speech, but because America is doing right, living right, morally living right, helping its neighbors, doing what needs to be done, and then the blessings of God will come. Or, in the case of what I believe, that the consequences of living right will be better than the consequ consequences of what we're seeing now, Amen. what we're seeing today. The consequences we are seeing today is, is just, it's insanity that we're bending to such a small minority of people that we are now saying that's normal thinking when it is not normal thinking. Does anybody know what gaslighting is? 
Gaslighting is a term that came about from a 1940s movie in black and white, my favorite, in which a woman was made to feel she was going insane by her husband. He kept doing little things to cause her to begin to question her own sanity. The culture is beginning to gaslight everybody. And it wants to gaslight us. It wants us to think that we're thinking wrong. We are not thinking wrong. We are trying to tell people there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. There is a savior who came to give his life that people might have eternal life. Amen. We're telling people the Bible is true and if we live by its principles and precepts, we will be blessed. By the way, if you live by godly principles, you won't be so deep in debt you lay awake at night and wonder, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay the rent? What's going to happen to me? Because you'll realize the Bible tells you, be content with what you have. Give to God and God will provide for your needs. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things, food, clothing, and shelter, will be added unto you. God knows what you need. So, last of all, Israel lost remembrance of their God. Jeremiah 3.21. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children for, of Israel, for they have perverted their way, they have forgotten the Lord their God. Number one. What should we do in this current situation? Well, let's not forget God's blessings. Let's not forget God's blessings. So we have blessings. Psalm 103, verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And one of the benefits we have is that there are men and women willing to go into harm's way to keep the invaders off our shores. Amen. We have men and women that have given their lives, laid down their lives, that we might be able to stand up and tell it like it is. Number two is this. Let's not panic. I see a lot of people panicking. And, you, and when it comes to finances, people get really panicky. I know. I've been there. I've done that. But let's not panic. Why? Well, Daniel 4.13 assures us of this. The Most High still rules over the affairs of men. Amen? Amen? God is still in control. So let's not forget God. Let's not panic in the current situation. And, they, and there's a war going on for our culture. In fact, they name it now cancel culture or the woke culture. You know, they've woken up. That's why I put outside. You may cancel a culture, you'll never cancel Christ. Amen. Amen. You'll never cancel Christ. Amen. And number three, and I conclude with this, let's not not pray. First Timothy chapter two, verse number one. I exhort therefore. That first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for some men. For some kings, for some that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life with all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Why? Shall we pray for these people? Because God says... I will have all men to be what? Saved. Saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Amen. I wrote this. We scoff at, we mock, we ridicule, we resent, we all but pray for the candidates we disagree with. I believe as Christians, this is my recent conviction, that we sin against God and against the people that we are so politically opposed to that we never pray for. When the Bible clearly says, I, I, now I'm reading from the King James Version, so maybe in your versions it did say some men, some kings, some in authority. 
But if you've got that version, throw it out. Because God wants us to pray for all people in leadership above us. Why? So they might be saved. Now, what would happen if somebody that we can't stand politically gets saved and they change their thinking? Because that's the only thing that's going to change their thinking. 